Hi everyone, tonight's video is on the process of meiosis. And really, I'm going to be spending most of this video talking about why a cell even needs to undergo the process of meiosis. So first of all, I'd like to compare the two division processes of mitosis and meiosis. So if we look at the cell types that undergo these division processes, for mitosis, the cell types are called somatic cells. Somatic cells are all the cells in your body except the cells that form your eggs and your sperm. These cells divide by the process of mitosis. The cells that form the eggs and the sperm in the ovaries and testes, the sex cells, they divide by the process of meiosis. What types of cells are produced by these division processes? Well, somatic cells produce other somatic cells. But cells that divide by meiosis produce the gametes, or the eggs and the sperm. The number of cells produced from each division process is different. In mitosis, one cell divides to form two daughter cells. In meiosis, one cell, cell ultimately forms four daughter cells. Are those daughter cells identical? In mitosis, yes they are. But in meiosis, those four cells are not identical. And then finally, the ultimate purpose of these two division processes for mitosis, it's growth and repair of the organism. And meiosis, it's about production of the gametes. It's only for producing eggs and sperm. So why have two different types of cell division? Well, in sexual reproduction, two organisms mate to produce an offspring. The process of mating involves the production of an egg and a sperm. These are called your gametes. And then ultimately, they fuse to form a fertilized egg which is also known as a zygote. After many, many mitotic cell divisions, this would then, this zygote would then develop into a multicellular offspring. But the joining of the egg and the sperm presents a problem in terms of chromosome number. If we look at adult humans, they have 46 chromosomes. So our sperm producing human would have 46 chromosomes and our egg producing human would have 46 chromosomes. And if the production of the sperm happened by mitosis, then the sperm would also have 46 chromosomes, and so would the egg. Then, when the egg and the sperm fertilize and join to form the zygote or fertilized egg, our fertilized egg would have 92 chromosomes, and the next generation of humans would have 92 chromosomes. This means every generation would double in chromosome number, and clearly this isn't how it happens. So, Let's think of another way to do this. What if there was a way for the adults, the sperm producing adults and the egg producing adults to produce a sperm and an egg that only had 23 chromosomes or half the chromosome number? Then when the egg and the sperm joined, the fertilized egg or zygote would have 46 chromosomes and ultimately the next generation would have 46 chromosomes, the same as the original parental chromosomes or parental chromosome number. So this process of going from 46 chromosomes to 23 chromosomes is the process of meiosis. It's a reductive division. It's the process of reducing the number of copies of each chromosome in the cells that form the eggs and the sperm. So before we talk about how the cells that form egg and sperm, which are called gametes again, reduce the number of copies of each chromosome, we need to look at the number of chromosomes and the number of copies of those chromosomes in organisms that reproduce sexually. I'll use the human genome as an example. What I have here shown on the left is a picture of the chromosomes in a human. This is referred to as a karyotype. Humans have two copies of every chromosome. We are called diploid. Let's look at these chromosomes. You can look here and see the one we have labeled chromosome number one, we have two copies of chromosome number one. We have two copies of chromosome two, all the way up through chromosome number 22. Then we also have chromosomes that are known as our sex chromosomes that are labeled either X or Y. In total, we have 46 chromosomes, but we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. We got one of each of these pairs of our chromosomes came from each of our parents. So one chromosome number one came from our mother and one chromosome number one came from our father. These two 
copies of each chromosome, so this chromosome number one and this chromosome number one, are called homologous chromosomes or homologs. They're homologous because they have the same genes on them, but not necessarily the same forms of the gene. So let's look at chromosome number one again. Let's say the one on the left came from your mother and the one on your right came from your father. And let's use the example of hair color. Let's say that both of these chromosome number ones have the gene for hair color, but maybe the one from your mother has the gene for blonde hair and the one from your father has the gene for brown hair. These two forms of the gene, blonde hair and brown hair, are called alleles. So homolo homologs or homologous chromosomes have the same genes, but they do not necessarily have the same alleles. In humans, as I said, chromosomes 1 through 22 are called your autosomes. The other two chromosomes are called your sex chromosomes. These are the X and Y chromosomes. In this karyotype here, there is no Y chromosome shown. The X and the Y chromosomes are determined whether you will produce eggs or sperm. If you have two X chromosomes, you will produce eggs. And if you have an X and a Y chromosome, you will produce sperm. This karyotype is from a human that produces eggs. Note, it's really important to realize that sperm-producing individuals only have one copy of their X and Y chromosomes, but we still refer to them as diploid organisms. And we are going to treat the X and Y chromosomes as homologous pairs for the process of meiosis, but it's important to note they do not have the same genes on them. So how can we solve the problem of doubling the number of chromosomes with each generation? Well, if we start with our diploid adults and we look at the karyotype of diploid adults, again, you can see it is diploid. There are two copies of every chromosome. What if there was a way to reduce the number of copies of chromosomes so that you only had one copy of chromosome number one and one copy of chromosome number two? That would make what we refer to as a haploid organism. Well, what if during the process of forming a sperm and an egg, we formed haploid gametes, so a haploid sperm would only had one copy of each chromosome, and a haploid egg that only had one copy of each chromosome, just like this karyotype here. This then, by fertilization, when they would join together to form a zygote, the zygote would once again become diploid, because it would get one copy of chromosome number one from the egg, and one copy of chromosome number one from the, the, the sperm, and eventually would end up with a diploid zygote. This process of going from a diploid cell to a haploid zygote is the process of meiosis. It's a reductive division. You reduce the number of copies of each chromosome from two copies to one copy. It's a very important point. Only gamete producing cells in the ovary, those in the egg producing adults, and in the testes, in sperm producing adults, undergo meiosis to divide. A cell doesn't wake up in the morning and decide, you know, today is a meiosis day. I think I'm going to do meiosis. Cells are either pre-programmed. They undergo meiosis if their job in life is to produce eggs and sperm, or they undergo mitosis. This isn't a decision the cell gets to make. It's pre-programmed. All the cells in the body, except the cells that are going to produce eggs and sperm, divide by mitosis. So let's very briefly look at the process of meiosis. We'll cover this much more in depth in class. If we start with a cell that has four total chromosomes, it has two replicated copies of two chromosomes. So it has two large chromosomes, so these would be homologous chromosomes, and it has two small chromosomes. These would also be homologous chromosomes. If we look at them in prophase one, the chromosomes have condensed, They've attached to the spindle. And then if we looked at them in metaphase one, metaphase one of meiosis looks very different from metaphase of mitosis. In metaphase of mitosis, the cells have lined up single file at the metaphase plate. But in our first division of meiosis, our homologous pairs have paired up. So my two chromosomes that are large have paired up together. My two small chromosomes have paired up together. And my homologous pairs have lined up at the metaphase plate. Anaphase one of meiosis also looks very different. 
In anaphase 1, the chromatids do not separate. What separates is my homologous pairs. And at my first division, at telophase 1 and cytokinesis, I end up with two haploid cells. One, each cell has one replicated copy of each chromosome. Students every year find this really difficult to understand. They say, but this is a replicated chromosome. Doesn't this count as two copies of the chromosome? Yes, but it's only one copy of chromosome number one. The other chromosome number one is in the other cell. So these are haploid cells. Now in meiosis, the cell has to undergo the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase process twice to, to go from a diploid cell to a haploid cell. So my two cells that just underwent the first cell division process never actually decondense, but they go straight back into a prophase 2. And at prophase 2, again, we're attached to the spindle. At metaphase 2, I realize my labels aren't in the video here, but in metaphase 2, it looks very much like metaphase of mitosis. In metaphase, we have our chromosomes lined up at the metaphase plate. And then at anaphase 2, the chromatids separate to form daughter chromosomes, just as in meiosis. And then finally, at telophase 2 and cytokinesis, we end up with our four daughter cells, each of which is different from each other and is different from our original mother cell. And these cells are haploid. Each has a single unreplicated copy, one copy of the big chromosome and one copy of the small chromosome. So again, we will go through this very carefully in class tomorrow. The vocabulary you should know from this video. You should know the difference between a gamete and a zygote. You should know the difference between haploid and diploid. You should know what a homologous chromosome is. You should know what an allele is and what the difference is between an allele and a gene. You should know what autosomes and sex chromosomes are. And you should know what a somatic cell is versus a sex cell. You also, should also have an idea of what a karyotype is. So that's all for tonight.